And the last thing we need to do for this setup is to cut the part off. So we're going to go to Tool Pass, Cut Off. Now it says select the cutoff boundary. All you're doing with cutoff boundary is picking the point that represents the back side of the part. So I'm going to move down over here and select that end point. And now we pick our cutoff tool. So these are groove tools. You probably could use those. But if you go down to the end of the list, you will find some cutoff tools. Here we've got one that's an eighth inch wide. I'm going to use that. Now one other thing we might want to do while we're on this page, and again this depends on your particular post, I'm going to come down here to Canned Text. And Canned Text allows us to output codes for things that aren't necessarily visible in Mastercam. And what we want to do in this case is to advance the chute. The chute is the parts chute that catches the part. So I'm going to select Advanced Chute and I've got it set to before and we're gonna say add and then after this tool path I wanna do a return shoot so I'm gonna say return shoot after and then add that so basically when this tool path comes up to be processed it's gonna advance the shoot do the cutoff and then return the shoot so we're gonna OK that but all of that depends on whether or not those functions are supported in your post processor. Now let's take a look at our cutoff parameters. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got a hundred thousandths clearance from the outside. So that could be from the outside of the part or the outside of the stock. In our case, it's going to be the same place because we already turned down the outside. The X tangent point is the point that you're cutting down to. So let me pick the X tangent point button and I only need to cut down to, let me zoom up on it, this point right here. Now make sure you're getting the end point of your geometry. should be right there at the edge of your drill. And that says it's cutting down to an X of 0.75 and that would be right, the radial dimension for our hole. But I'm going to change that to 0.7. I actually want it to cut a little bit past that point. Let's take a look at our pecking options. Depending on the material, you might want to take this in multiple pecks. So we've got an amount per peck. We can say the number of pecks that we want or the distance per peck. And then whether or not we want to do retract moves. Do you want it to retract all the way back or just a little bit? I'm going to tell it I want a 30 thousandths retract incremental. That means it's going to go in 150 and then back up. Looks like that changed when I picked incremental. Let me try that again. So it's going to go in 150 thousandths and then back up 30 and then go in another 150 thousandths and always back up and that will break the chip. And we'll OK this. You'll also notice here you can tell it how much stock to leave on the back face in case you want to have some material there to turn when you flip it over. And whether you're calculating to the front side of the radius for the cutoff or the back side of the radius, I'm just going to leave that at the default. And we'll say OK. Well, it looks like I picked the point wrong. Let's go back and take another look at that. Oh, we're going to say entry amount from stock. I think it might be hitting the stock. Let's OK that and try it again. There we go. There's our tool path. You can see there it cut off the bar. We can also select that for um, back plot. And if we single step this, you'll see there's the stock. So that finishes all of these tool paths for our first setup. So you might want to name this machine group. I'm going to give that a click once to select it and once more so that I can rename this. I 
and I'm going to say set up one bar cutoff operation. So we'll know that this is done as a bar pull job. 